into early next week. So it's really a factor of planning out your weekend appropriately based on the weather. One thing you're going to need to plan for will be that risk of rip currents. Places like Daytona Beach actually have the beaches open. So you've got to be very careful if you, as you've got that high risk from the first coast all the way down through the Treasure Coast. Uh, places like Miami, your beach is not officially open yet. So you will not have to worry about getting in the water with that, but you still want to be careful. You can see here dangerous conditions where you see the red flag flying. Double red flag means closed. You need to stay out, and that's what we're seeing on a lot of the beaches. Let's take a look at your forecast for somewhere like Daytona Beach, where today pretty nice. You've got a mix of sun and clouds. Also not bad tomorrow, but you'll notice you start to see that uh, typical stormy pattern picking up as you head through the week. Of course, we're entering into the rainy season in Florida, and you can pretty much guarantee for places like West Palm, you're going to at least have scattered afternoon thunderstorms, but you'll notice a pretty unsettled weather pattern today and into next week. Sunday through Monday, Friday, you can see the best day in Miami to spend some time outdoors would be today because your storm chances do begin to pick up as we head into early next week. And then this is what we're looking at for Fernandina Beach. You've got pretty nice weather, but Tuesday and Wednesday watching a tropical system, so we want you to get prepared. Great tips there. Let's talk about it. So we're talking about Invest 90L. Of course, that's been the story. And we have been seeing those waves of rain, even some flooding issues across South Florida. Here's what you should start doing to get prepared now. It's always very important to make sure that you have a plan in place. And part of that plan is going to decide on what shelter you need to head to. And if you do, are you in an evacuation zone? Or is it somewhere that you can stay pretty safely? Buy those supplies. That is going to be a, an extra element of difficulty right now as we're dealing with COVID-19. And some of your typical supplies that might be very easy to find might be a little bit harder to come by. Do an insurance checkup and make sure you're protecting your home. As always, help a friend. You never know who might be in need. This is some of the other supplies that you need for water. You want one gallon per person for at least seven days. You want lots of non-perishables. You want to make sure that you have uh, as many of your prescriptions as you can get filled. You do not want to run out of that, especially if we're in a situation where we're going to be, um, you know, not operating as normal for quite some time. Get some cash from the ATM because you might not be able to use those cards. Always good advice there. First aid kit. I can't stress the importance of this. You never know uh, what type of things you're going to be dealing with. There could be debris out there as you're walking around. So uh, you want to make sure you have that first aid kit with band-aids and everything you might need. A battery powered NOAA weather radio. So important. You may think, well, usually I use my phone. However, if we're without electricity for quite some time, it might be harder to charge your phone. So this is going to become something that is so useful. And of course, those battery powered LED lights, no candles. That is something that's very important. You don't want to be using those candles. And battery-powered or solar chargers. Flashlights are also great. So many things for you to put in your kit right now. And then we actually have a system that's threatening. You won't have to worry about it. Now, of course, we are keeping an eye on Invest 90L hanging out here between the Bahamas and the southeast coast of Florida. You see it there. 80% chance of development as we're watching this system. Now, regardless of development, it's funneling moisture and gusty winds into the east coast of Florida and also creating some very rough uh, beach situations. Here's the area of development for the next five days. You'll notice the general progression of this off to the northeast through the Atlantic. Some of the models have moved it a little bit farther west, though, so we are going to have to watch the Outer Banks. We currently have our